Okay. When we work according to the scientific method, we start off with a focused question. And it's not a typo there, it's not casual, it's a causal relationship, which means that the, the one factor causes something to happen. So they might ask, give you a question and you have to write a, uh, an hypothesis on it, or they can ask you which question could have been asked. Then after the question, it's about stating an hypothesis. Remember that the hypothesis always, it has to include the two variables, the dependent and independent uh, um, variables, and then it has to also give the relationship that they occur between these two variables. Mm. And, of course, when you have a hypothesis, can you design an investigation? Can it or is it testable? And never in the form of a question, always as a statement. And I think this is also yeah. a good way of showing them. So remember, if we have a hypothesis, look at that. It can, it can be written as that. Mm. So it's an independent variable. So as the independent variable changes, the dependent variable changes. Now, our question is, what is a dependent and what is an independent variable? Mm. And I think many learners, they, they find it a bit difficult to distinguish between the two. Mm. There you can see the independent variable. There's an example of a hypothesis. As the level of moisture increases, the number of seeds germinated also increases. Now, if we look at that example, which one of those two factors can you think can we control? Can we change all the time? And which one will change as a result of the one that we manipulate. In other words, you're asking them the one that we have control over, that we can decide yes. upon. That is the independent That's variable. Right. In other words, if we look at our slide, if we look at the level of moisture increases, that was the one you decided. Are you going to put more or less water mm -hmm. with the experiment? So that is the independent variable. And the results that you're waiting to see, how many seeds germinated, that will be the dependent variable because the second one mm. that will change all the time because mm. we manipulate that one so the mm. independent variable is the one that we manipulate we can have control over and this i put it in red, red there for you so that you can see you can say hypothesis can be anything you can say it increases and that one decreases or you can say both of them decrease it's the this is the relationship between mm. the two that we have spoken about. So here you have your independent variable, there you have your dependent variable, and you have the relationship between mm. the two. And that will see to it that you mm. get at least three marks. Yeah. yeah. Right, once again the variables, just to summarize, the independent variable is the cause. It's a factor that you can change, that you want to see what is the influence of that factor. Mm -hmm. The dependent variable is what you measure, what you look for, your results. And then the controlled or the fixed variables are those that you keep the same. Remember when I talked about the dissolving of the sugar, mm -hmm. um, the same size container, the same amount the of same water. The same type of container same even. type of container yeah. can also be influenced because some containers take heat from the environment mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. some are insulators. So yes, so these are the three variables that you must know. You have to recognize them. If we can have a look at the slides. You have to recognize them and you have to explain them. And in an experiment, you have to identify them. Okay. And then when you've done an experiment, you must write down, you must record your data. And you can do it in many ways. But if you do it in a table, um, one thing, a table is a grid made from ruled lines. And it must have a heading with both variables. And could we have the... Um, paper I said I wasn't going to write but now I must <laughs> oh yeah okay yeah it looks blue okay we can have our tables in two ways we can have vertical columns right or we can have a horizontal table looking like that independent variable on the left on the top and dependent variable on the right or 
at the bottom. So you might get your table in this form or in that form in a paper. And where are you going to look for the independent variable? On the left, if it's a vertical table. On the top, if it's horizontal. And when you do a graph, which one do you put on the x-axis? The independent variable. What do you put on the y-axis? The dependent variable. And I think this is very important that our mm. learners should know this because they will be given a table sometimes or maybe mm. they will get a table but from the table they will have to draw, yeah. draw a graph yeah. or vice versa. Yeah. And you only put numbers in mm -hmm. your um, blocks. You don't put the units. You don't write 5 centimeters, 10 centimeters, 11 centimeters. You write length in centimeters at the top and gen the, then you just write 5, 10 and 11, for example. Yeah, and we find that they make quite a few mistakes mm. with that. Mm. The ta table must have headings and the table must have column headings as well. And these are the basic patterns that you get when you have measurements. Either, now, if you look at this, you have to draw conclusions from your data that you mm. have recorded and you do your graphs, then you can see as your independent variable, as this increases, you will see that your dependent variable will increase as well. And then as your dependent, um, independent variable increases, your dependent variable will decrease. And as the independent variable increases, it increases to a certain extent, and then it remains the stable, dependent variable. the dependent variable. So it's the relationship between your independent and your dependent mm. variable. Just with this last one, when you get a question like this and you have to explain the trend, if we look at the last graph, then for instance like this, don't say it goes up and then it's steady. Say it will increase up to, there might be a time for instance, or a day. Let's say it's day two increases up to day two and from day two till day ten it is stable so be specific when you describe